Good morning, this is Cindy Blansett Coots and welcome to my Clean and Simple Tuesday series along with another preview of the Just Cards starting next week on June 24th. You can sign up and register at any time at cbdcardclasses.com and this is the card that we're going to be making today. It's June 18th and I am 50. Um, real clean, simple, easy card. We're going to change this one up a little bit so just to add a little more color. This base here is um, one of the new colors by Stampin' Up! and it's Smoky Slate and I believe I use Bermuda Bay, Marina Mist and um, I want to say Soft Sky but that's on my blog and this all down here is Old Olive and how I made this is I colored directly onto the stamp for markers so I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside. The only piece of designer paper that I'm using is this right here and it was cut from Paper Tray Inks envelope liner because I'm too lazy to cut it myself. And this here, it came from the new in series or in color designer series paper stack. And there's four patterns. You have like this chevron one, almost this quarter foil one, just I want to say this is like a different type of chevron. And then of course First thing I'm going to do, since I've already die cut my envelope liner, and I do want this side to show, I'm just going to go ahead and fold it at the crease. And remember, if you still have this on your bone folder, don't use that side. It comes off on your paper. So how I put my envelope liner is... And I explained this the other day, but just in case you missed it, I just go ahead and slip it in and pull it all the way down, make sure it's even on both sides. And then I just simply grab some adhesive and go across top and bottom. And then I butt it up as much as I can right up against that envelope the flap of it. Run my nail along it and then just go ahead and close it and there you have a perfect envelope. So we're going to set this aside and get working on our card. The only ink color I'm going to be using for my sentiment is going to be the new ink color of Baked Brown Sugar. We have two stamp sets and they are Love and Sympathy and this is the image that we'll be using. We'll be taking our markers and direct coloring onto this, and this holds color great. And then our next one is going to be Trust God, and our sentiment is going to be Each One of Us is God's Special Work of Art. So I'm going to get this all set aside, get started here. I do have a piece of baked brown sugar as my cardstock base, and this is your A2 landscape which means I have cut this to five and a half across by eight and a half down and then scored at the four and quarter mark. I have two pieces of Whisper White cardstock here and they are cut one third of an inch less. So it's like that because you know I like my wiggle room. So I'm going to go ahead and set this all aside. I want to put just a tiny bit of temporary adhesive on the back to keep this straight as I'm stamping and make sure it's in your line of sight and I still haven't fixed that um, glare problem yet. I really apologize for that. I, I'll get around to it one day. I'm going to go ahead and make this card more along the reddish orangish side. So I have three markers here for my stems. I have Gumball Green, Old Olive, and this one is always Artichoke. And then for the flowers, I have Poppy Parade, Calypso Corral, Corral, however, and Peach Parfait. Th three of these um, aren't even available anymore, but I hoard my markers. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead grab a grain and when I'm done with this I'm going to set it to my right side so I know that I've already used that color and 
this stamp is really easy to color. Um, if you want to mass produce cards, this is a good one to use because that way you get different looking cards depending on the color that you use. So I'm just going to go ahead and color that in. And I'm doing the largest area first because um, the small side, it just takes a couple strokes of color. I have my color in. I'm going to give it a quick huff to reactivate it just in case any of it dries. I hate doing that on camera. And I did go ahead and put this on a stamp a jig because I want to make sure that my first flower is centered. Because if not, your whole panel is going to end up in the garbage can. So I have that down, set it aside, grab my stamp, and then just push down. And there we go. Nice color. I'm not going to clean this off at all because I got the majority of my color down there. So the next one I'm going to take, this one is going to be Old Olive, and I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process of coloring in the stems and then picking another color to color the flowers in with. Now that I have my stems colored, I'm going to go ahead and pick Calypso Coral for my flower. Make sure you can see that. Just go ahead and Color that in real fast. And when you use these markers, use the side of them. If you go down like that, you're going to end up putting, getting your, the tip of your marker all blunt. And we don't want to do that. Get this another quick huff. Grab my imaging sheet back. And now I'm just going to use it to go ahead and line up to make sure everything's straight there and how, how this turned out it's going to go at the very bottom of the paper give that a quick stamp hold it down a little bit let the ink soak in and there's that last two colors I have are gumball green and the peach parfait. So I'm going to repeat this process one more time. Now I'm going to color in my flower. Again using the side of my marker. And if you're mass producing these, stick to the same color family like I am, especially for the flowers. Grab my Stampin' Magic sheet back. I think that's going to do it. I'll put down one last flower. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up with my craft thingy and show it close up. I think it looks really cool. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and just let it dry. Even though it's water-based ink, it's going to dry real quick, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Let's go ahead and get that envelope decorated up real quick. I am just going to grab any color. This one's going to be gumball green. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the envelope that I've done to the front of the card. So I'm just going to color in these stems. And let's go ahead and grab the poppy parade. And color in that flower. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the outside of the envelope. 
just over here in this corner and it's really easy to line up too when you have a block then give that a really good press turn out nice now I'm going to go ahead and grab my card base back and my other piece of very vanilla cardstock. I'm just going to put some adhesive on that and I'm going to go all the way around the card. Open this up. Get it lined up. And since I do have that third of an inch, I have my wiggle room that I love. And just set that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the baked brown sugar ink. I'm going to grab our sentiment, give it a few light taps. And since you all know I can't do sentiment straight to save my life, of course, I have this on um, a stamp imaging, imaging sheet as well. I'm going to go ahead and put this one here right up in the corner. That way it will give you some good room to write a note. Since this is kind of an encouraging card. And just quick down, quick up, no smearing. So we have that. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over this way, line that up, the main image panel. I'm just going to flip it over and put some adhesive on that all the way around. And I still have that temporary adhesive on there. to put this right here on our card. Looks good. I'm going to go around the edges. I don't want to smear anything. And if you feel that you have to, get it all the way down and flip it over. That way if any ink comes off, it'll go right to this paper and none did. Finishing touch for our card of course is rhinestones. If you choose to use colors um, that are more current than I did, especially some of the new one, get some of those new candy dots that are pretty cool. They're like the enamel dots that are out there and stick them in the middle of each one. I think it would really play it up nicely. On my sample card here, I used the larger rhinestones and I think they may, may be a little bit too large but I do like how it makes it pop. So I'm going to go ahead and use that size again. I'm just going to grab three and put them right in the middle. And there we are. Done with our card. I think it turned out very nice. And again, here is a picture of my sample card. And you saw how quick and easy that was to make. So I hope to see you in class starting next Monday. And I hope that you enjoyed these clean and simple cards. Thank you so much for stopping by to visit me today. God bless you and have a good day. Bye.